Hello folks, I'm Wade Tate for ArthritisCure.me. I hope I find you today on a happy and healthy and pain-free day. But if not, then maybe I can do something about it and help you because today I'd like to talk to you about something that I'm very passionate about. And that's a molecule that uh, can be used to treat rheumatoid arthritis and many other conditions such as heart disease and COPD. And this wonderful nutrient is of course sulfurophane. And sulfurophane is found in green leafy cruciferous vegetables, stuff like broccoli and Brussels sprouts, cauliflowers, cabbages, watercress, arugula, cauliflower sprouts, collard greens, turnips, mustard, and even in the humble red radish. But um, most folks will be familiar with sulfurophane through its well reported association with broccoli. And you may even be eating. Uh, broccoli already specifically for the sulfurophane content and if that's you then I take my hat off to you well done um, but you know there's an unfortunate problem with this because the amount of sulfurophane found in broccoli varies wide, wildly between uh, the varieties that we can eat and there's a great example of this from the John Hopkins University School of Medicine who have shown that uh, three day old broccoli sprouts and that's the seeded broccoli that's been grown for just three days contains 20 to 50 times more chemoprotective compounds and that's the cancer fighting stuff than is found in mature broccoli heads so what you have to do to get your cancer fighting uh, sulfurophane is sprout some broccoli seeds and eat them in a delicious salad i mean we can all do that we can all make these things in a, a window box or out in our garden and you know, just chew on a salad, it saves you chomping all that broccoli, uh, which is a real boost for you who don't like eating broccoli. Uh, personally, I love it, so I'll be uh, carrying on eating all the beautiful nutrients that that also provides, but I will supplement in tandem. So sprouting is a great way to get some of your cancer fighting production, but you know, I like to supplement. Too. And when I first came across sulfurophane all those years ago, it was widely touted as this wonder nutrient, cancer killer, and all these other things, but there just wasn't that much going on in the way of supplementation. It was just too new. But now, fortunately, this has changed, and sulfurophane is widely available in supplement form, and it's also now very inexpensive. And that's great news for us all because we can benefit regardless of our dietary choices or budget. So uh, yeah, cancer fighting, that's great and all good, but um, this is a nutrient which is chemically classified as an isocyanate, and it can also help to repair DNA, reduce inflammation, help with your detoxification, and kill pathogens in the gut. So let's dive into some of these benefits. Uh, now first, of course, we have to look into RA because uh, that's where we're at. And there's also plenty of evidence later for uh, those of you with OA, osteoarthritis, there's benefits uh, to do with that too. So I'm going to buzz over some, some studies because uh, the ones that I've read make it quite clear that sulfurophane protects against RA on multiple levels. And this remarkable nutrient, it does everything from stopping damaging inflammatory, inflammatory processes before they get going uh, to preventing cartilage breakdown and that's both in animal and lab studies and human studies and they've all shown that um, sulfurophane has an impressive capability to inhibit many of the usual pathways we see involved in inflammation such as shutting down some of the cyclooxygenase and interleukin pathways which are implicated in the production of matrix damaging enzymes so as i said i'm going to buzz a few of these out to you and um, it is pure science uh, i won't do too many so please stick around and, and listen to these because there's some profoundly uh, valuable knowledge in them. Um, the first one reads uh, sulfurophane as opposing effects on TNF-alpha stimulated and unstimulated cyanobocytes. And the conclusion was, we were able to show that sulfurophane treatment acts contrary on naive and inflammatory cyanobocytes. And sulfurophane induces the cytoprotective transcription factor, NRF2, in naive cyanobocytes whereas it induces apoptosis, that cell death, in inflamed cyanobocytes. And these findings indicate that the use of sulfurophane might be considered as an adjunctive therapeutic strategy to combat inflammation, panis formation, and cartilage destruction in RA. And that's from the scientists. That's not me putting that in there. That's direct science saying that human subjects can use this stuff 
as an adjunctive therapy to help with their RA. Pretty powerful stuff. And there's another one here, sulfurophane inhibits interleukin-1 induced proliferation of rheumatoid arthritis, synovial fibroblasts, and the production of MMPs, COX-2, and PGE-2. And these results indicate that sulfurophane inhibits the proliferation of synovial fibroblasts, the expression of MMPs, and COX-2, and the production of PGE-2, which are involved in synovitis and destruction in RA and suggest that sulfurophane might be a new therapeutic agent for RA. And again, that is the scientist talking. That's not me putting something in there or making this up. That's science. Another study titled Sulfurophane Represses Matrix Degrading Proteases and Protects Cartilage from Destruction in Vitro and In Vivo. Now, proteases are the enzymes that break down protein. And this was carried out by researchers from the University of East Anglia. And they found that sulfurophane helped to reduce the production of the enzymes that contribute to human cartilage breakdown. So again, that's in a human study uh, from science, from a great university. No doubt about it, it's just the stuff to have. So uh, yeah, this stuff is cartilage protective, uh, anti-inflammatory, and uh, obviously that will help with your pain and your movement. So uh, please say no to all that. It's powerful knowledge and it's right there. Uh, so yeah, just carry on with a few mice studies. Uh, quickly, mice fed a sulfurophane rich diet had fewer signs of arthritis in the cartilage and controls. That's a wild study link below. Another study on mice indicates administration of sulfurophane significantly reduced elevated levels of TNF alpha production by LPS stimulated macrophages. So, what does that mean? Well, it means that lipopolysaccharides were used to induce arthritis inflammation, and that was then treated with sulfurophane. And the results indicated that the sulfurophane has an immunomodulatory effect or activity through its ability. To reduce TNF alpha. So, all you sufferers of musculoskeletal diseases will be interested to know that there is uh, evidence that sulfurophane has positive influences on bone growth and resorption. And resorption is a process which removes bone and can be beneficial in situations. It gives us energy and all these kinds of things. Um, and it can help also help to reduce bone spares and nodules, but in general. Um, there's evidence that sulfurophane is great for keeping the natural processes that go into bone turnover healthy and, and happy. So great for bone health, um, obvious implications for osteoarthritis, but there's also um, more benefits and they extend out to detoxification. And both cell and animal studies have demonstrated that sulfurophane neutralizes carcinogens, that's cancer-causing chemicals, by activating phase two detoxification enzymes in the liver. Anything that can get in there and maximize the detoxification pathways are always valuable and they have body-wide implications for health. So uh, phase two detoxification, that's usually referred to as the conjugation pathway. And in this particular case, sulfurophane uh, would be added to uh, the toxic chemical by the liver cells and would render it less harmful. And once that chemical exchange has taken place, the toxin or, or drug then becomes chemically altered, so it's water soluble, meaning it can be excreted by the body by the usual elimination channels. And they would be usually the bile, urine, sweat. So um, these enzymes and chemical reactions are vital for health. So be aware of them and maximize them where possible. Combine them with good hydration, plenty of good hard, sweaty physical exercise, and that will give you the best benefits. But also, uh, then be aware that you need to put some stuff back in, some antioxidants to uh, counteract the oxidation of the physical exertion. But you, you can see a great pathway there to health. Uh, cancer research, various lab experiments have shown that sulfurophane may help protect against prostate, colon, pancreatic, and other forms of cancer. And the really interesting part is that the research indicates that one of the targets of sulfurophane may be microtubules. And these are dynamic tube-like protein fibers that are found in living cells and they're responsible for proper cell division and mitosis. And mitosis is the first act of splitting the, the cell. And sulfurophane seem to have a pronounced protective response against oxidative damage to prostate cells. And that's according to a study on prostate cancer, which is linked below. And uh, went on to say that there was a clear reduction in the size of prostate tumors in mice 
and this has been demonstrated with uh, sulforaphane seemingly able to induce the production of enzymes that can deactivate free radicals and carcinogens. And these enzymes have been shown to inhibit the growth of prostate tumours in lab animals by 60 to 80 percent when fed sulforaphane is extracted from broccoli. So we see uh, more studies as well, and they are on skin cancer. Topical treatment can reduce the incidence of squamous cell carcinoma or skin cancer, so apply it topically, and uh, you're getting skin cancer protection. And breast cancer isn't safe either from this stuff because this wonder nutrient targets cancer stem cells. And this new study from the University of Michigan found that sulforaphane targeted and killed cancer stem cells and prevented new tumours from growing. And what's even better, is that the healthy surrounding tissue and cells were left unharmed. And all this led the researchers to support the use of sulforaphane as a chemo-preventative in breast cancer. And the discoveries were made that uh, suggest that sulforaphane blocks cell cycle progression at mitosis, so blocks uh, cellular regeneration of cancer right from the very first split in MCF7 breast cancer cells, and they're a long-lived line of breast cancer cells and that's in a manner similar to that of a more powerful anti-mitotic anti-cancer drug such as tax or, or vinblastine. Now cancer fighting is great, we all know about the cancer fighting uh, activities of curcumin but there seems to be a synergy here um, where we can get our anti-inflammatory properties in RA but uh, you know we can also combine this with sulforaphane and work them synergistically in their anti-inflammatory actions on macrophages. And the anti-inflammatory effects exerted by either substance alone is matched by their combination when concentrations are dropped to 40%. So that means we can combine these two um, substances and increase their power. I don't think that's too shabby for anyone naturally fighting cancer or inflammation. And of those two things, we can uh, assume that they do go in go hand in hand. Um, we have to be careful in our situation with increased inflammation. It can lead to cancer, uh, obviously, and future breakdown of cells and tissues and comorbidities. So, you know, it's my philosophy that fighting RA is all well and good, but, you know, arthritis cured at me, we go deeper levels into this stuff. It's massively important that we avoid these comorbidities and the other challenges that are coming, but you know, let's deal with them up front right now and understand how these things come about. So if we educate ourselves and implement these strategies into our daily routines, uh, we can put work in now, put it in up front, and then we can be confident in our future, you know. Because it's everything's predicated on mood and stress and, and physical health. It all runs from there. So mood and genetic expression. It's very important to build that up, build that personal power up and make these sacrifices now and leave disease with no place to go. That's the best way to do this. But sulfurophane uh, can be used in a host of uh, diseases, including in the treatment of COPD, uh, and it's shown to restore antioxidant gene expression on the bronchial epithelial cell line in humans. And that was reported in the September issue of the American Journal of Respiratory and Critical Care Medicine. And they went on to say that sulfurophane decreases inflammation in the lungs and helps white blood cells attack and kill off bacteria that cause lung infections, emphysema and chronic bronchitis. One experiment showed that sulfurophane increases expression of receptors that improve macrophage, phagocytic function. Now phagy means eat, so that's when the immune systems eat the broken and unidentified or suspect looking cells. And uh, now that may not be uh, too much concern of you if you don't have these problems, but uh, you have to remember that chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is the third leading cause of death in the USA. And that doesn't mean that it's being treated properly or anything like that, but you know, we've got to be in there first, getting, uh, getting our digs in before disease starts. So it's important, you know, I want you to have this information so you protect it against these diseases that can become comorbidities with RA in some cases, you know, and uh, following on from that, we have to look out, of course, for the heart, and sulfurophane has been shown to protect our arteries against the damage that can lead to heart disease. And that's in according to a study from Imperial College London, where it's demonstrated that sulfurophane helps to prevent inflammation in arteries and protects them from becoming clogged with plaques. And the researchers at Imperial College uh, went on to say that sulfurophane appears to increase the activity of artery 
protecting proteins that fight against inflammation. And I think that's pretty cool, you know, but um, any good article about RA or anything like that has to be concerned with uh, good health. So I'm happy to uh, report on the stunning implications that uh, sulfurophane has for the stomach and the reduction of the potentially damaging bad bacteria, Helicobacter pylori. And as anyone with RE should know that they should be paying particular attention to the foods that they eat and their gut bacteria. But we have to achieve a balance in gut bacteria through the use of probiotics. And it's important that we, as individuals, understand which foods are good for us and, and which are not. Uh, we're, all different, we're all different inside and we have our own unique balance of intestinal flora. So you're gonna to have to play around with that and find your own balance. But uh, if we go out on the bad side, you know, we can also come to the same sorts of health problems when these inappropriate levels of bad bacteria are present over an extended periods of time. If their rampant spread isn't controlled, it can lead to manifestations of disease. But why am I telling you this? Well, one of these bad bacteria is called Helicobacter pylori, and this invader is a spiral-shaped bacteria which often infects us when we are children. I left and checked it can cause chronic inflammation that leads to infection in the stomach um, and the duodenum. And obviously that then leads to leaky gut and all these obvious problems and autoimmune conditions. So Helicobacter pylori has been proven to cause peptic ulcers and it does this by damaging the mucous membranes that protect the stomach and the duodenum. Now that's bad enough, but one in seven people infected with this bacteria will develop an ulcer. But this is twice as bad because the long-term infection is thought to increase the risk of people developing stomach cancer. Now fortunately there's some good news, uh, EAT counteract all this bad news because sulfurophane has been shown to reduce helicobacter pylori numbers in the stomach and what's more, even more impressive is that sulfurophane can kill antibiotic resistant strains of helicobacter pylori. Amazing. Now, I think that's pretty impressive. And uh, for great added side effect, it's, uh, you're going to be taking this stuff for your RA, cleaning up your stomach, doing wonderful things for your bones, protecting yourself from cancer. And what more could you want? You know, And it's cheap, easy to take, easy to grow naturally. Brilliant. So a sulfurophane dosage, what would that look like? Well, a typical dose would range from 200 to 400 milligrams daily. Uh, but that's been taken orally and many supplements now just go straight to a standardised 500 milligram capsule. Um, sulfurophane is absorbed very rapidly and reaches peak plasma concentrations in the blood in about an hour. Now unfortunately by availability it can vary between individuals and I said before we're all unique but uh, personally I haven't experienced any ill effects of supplementing larger split doses split to 2500 milligrams a day uh, for a thousand milligram total but please be aware you have to consult your doctor before taking any supplements like this and always check for interactions with any drugs that you might be taking. This is not meant as medical advice it is simply a review of some of the information available on the web and my own personal experiences. So I hope you'll all be encouraged to do more research and try sulfurophane out for yourself if appropriate. Personally I wouldn't be without it but we all, we all have different needs and to me the evidence is absolutely clear. So I thank you for stopping in today and uh, listening to the end. I appreciate it and I hope you'll subscribe to my channel for some daily RE videos that I'm hoping to be bringing in. And I'll keep working hard to bring these to you uh, and make sure that you've got the information of how to uh, cure your own uh, arthritis or, or at least treat it. And I'll try to tell you how I got well from RA without taking any drugs. And if you'd like to come and support me via Patreon, I'd be very grateful for that. And there is a link below um, in, the, in the comments. And I'd be super pumped to see you over there. So, uh, you know, I can give you great personal benefits and services that come along with being an exclusive member and contributor to all of our success. You, know, you can find us over at uh, Arthritis Cure at me, of course, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. But please come and feel, come, feel free to say a hi because um, I do my best to try and help you all for free, even though it's an impossible task. But you, know, you can jump to the front of the queue uh, by pledging or donating and letting me know about it. Um, you know, it's just one of those things. If, if I can help you and you're willing to make a contribution, then I can make more videos and help more people. So 
But that's the way that works, and I would love to uh, hear from you and hope we can have a chat soon. So thank you again for watching, and don't forget to check the links in the description. And I hope you have a great pain-free day. Thank you.